and we end up touching down, pointed toward the side of the runway at a very, very fast speed. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. So people ask me all the time what they can do to improve their landings. How can I make better, smoother landings? And there's a lot to say about it, but probably the very first place to start the discussion is airspeed control. Now if you guys know me or you've seen our ground school app, you know that I divide the landing into five phases when I teach it. And just recently we went through all five of those phases. We took an hour to do it on a free webinar. The replay is available for you to watch. You can find the link in the description and we're doing webinars once a month. So if you'd like to register for the next one coming up that I'm doing with Brian Schiff, uh, you can go to, also there's a link in the description. Now we can't go through all of this in this video. You'll, you have to look at the webinar if you wanna do that, but we are going to look at the most important part, the approach. If you don't have good airspeed control in the pattern, you should simply go around until you do. Think of it like a goalie in hockey. I don't care how good you are, if you're not in the correct position at the correct time, you're not gonna make the save, okay? So it's the same thing with flying. To show you this, let me take you on a ride where I'm flying just recently in the pattern with a new student. Now keep in mind, this guy is a great, got a, got a great feel for the airplane, but he's pre-solo. So even though we're flying a Mooney here, uh, he's still pre-solo, so, so give him a break. He's doing an awesome job, but he's making a lot of very common errors in this traffic pattern that I'm gonna show you. So let me just narrate along so I can show you kind of what I noticed from the right seat and what I would do to fix it. Okay, we start this thing here on the downwind. You can kind of see the runway there through the side window for the pilot. Um, and as we approach the beam position, I can already see that there's an issue. Um, if you look at the airspeed indicator, let's just freeze it here for a second. If you look at the airspeed indicator, we're flying about 90 knots. Here we got down to 80 actually for a second. But our plan in the pattern is to fly 90, 80, and then 70 on final. So 90 on downwind, 80 on base and 70 on final, which means before we get to that abeam position, we need to be flying at some speed a little bit faster than 90. So if you plan to fly 90 after you drop the flaps, or in this case, the gear and the flaps and reduce power and start descending for the runway, if, if 90 is the target speed there, then you wanna make sure that you're flying maybe 100 before you get there in the downwind. So you should have a known power setting in a Cessna 172, that's 2100 RPM-ish. 22, 20, depending on the weight. In the Mooney here, we figured out it was about 18 inches, but we didn't know that here. We're just kind of, I'm, I'm just sort of assessing to see what happens. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and play it again. So the gear is now down and we're a little bit slower than we need to be. Uh, we're still not yet at the abeam position. We're probably arriving there right about now. And at the abeam position, there should be a clear power change, the application of flaps, and the starting of some downline. But you'll notice instead of going down here, we're just slowing down. That's a very common mistake. So, you know, in looking at the runway uh, over his left shoulder, this pilot's kind of slowing down. And notice the VSI and the altitude are just still pretty much pattern altitude. That's uh, that's the first mistake in terms of getting into the right, the correct position. Uh, but I let this go to kind of see what happens. We're descending now. Uh, we're 80 knots here on the downwind. We meant to be 80 on base, so we're a little slow, but at least we're going down. And here on base, we would want to add more flaps. This is the key position, right? This is where you look out at the runway and decide, am I high, am I low, am I fast, am I slow? Do I need more flaps? Do I need to turn directly to the runway? So here we're 80 knots on base and kind of coming around into the final. So there should be a check of the final approach path, a confirmation via gumps or something that the, the airplane's configured properly. But what happened to us is we ended up a little bit high and we're still holding that 80. We still, we haven't had an efficient shedding of airspeed. We didn't do the, you know, the 90 knots and then turn base, add more flaps, 80 knots, you know, check your final approach path and turn final, add more flaps, 70 knots. But in fact, we're at 80. now. 
in this air, with any airplane, this should just be a go around. Okay, so we're 10 knots too fast, simply go around. Uh, but in a Mooney here, it's kind of critical because it's very difficult to get this airplane to stop flying. And what happens is my student just tries to force it onto the ground and uh, we lose a little bit of directional control. We start to go to the left there and I apply right rudder. Now I'm not picking on my student here because like I said, he's fairly new, but when you don't have good alignment on landing and you have all that extra airspeed, you're trying to fly the aircraft down, uh, you can easily leave the runway. Um, and in a Mooney, which has, you know, laminar flow wing, flush rivets, it's an airplane that doesn't want to stop flying. And so you'll see a lot of accident reports, even experienced pilots that end up in the trees at the end of the runway because they initiate late go arounds. Uh, a great standard operating procedure that I teach really for all runways with very few exceptions is to pick a halfway point on the runway. And if your wheels aren't down by that point, simply go around. That'll act as a bit of a safety net while you figure out not just your airspeed control during final, but also your alignment on landing. That's all for this video. I hope you guys walk away with some practical tips that make you safer and make you more confident. I'm Jason Miller. Please get a free three-day trial of our Ground School app. You won't be disappointed. And if you want to join us for next month's free webinar, please click the link in the description. Leave a comment below. We always would like to know what videos you guys want to see. Uh, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads, but most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.